Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have a video for you where I want to go into something that I've been seeing come up in my day to day more recently, which is complex event processing. Um, so complex event processing, if you're not aware, is a method that's used to analyze and react to streams of data in real time. Um, so not only processing data, but actually using that data to then identify meaningful patterns, correlations, trends across multiple events, multiple different points of data. And it's a technique widely used in applications like fraud detection, IoT monitoring, stock market analysis, network security, uh, because those all require more advanced detection of you know, different patterns or relationships between different points of data to address things like fraud or you know, any unwelcome activity. Now, Apache Flink is a really excellent choice for complex event processing because of its ability to handle high throughput, low latency event streams with really powerful stateful processing capabilities. Um, it also has really good event time processing, rich support for windowing where you can take a bracket of data and then you know, kind of analyze all those different, those different set of events. So perfect for complex event processing where you need to do that. And it also has some built-in libraries for pattern detection um, that make it really efficient for identifying complex event sequences via Flink CEP. Um, so that's what we're going to show you today. I'm going to show you how you can build a complex event processing pipeline with Apache Flink, both, you know, with some ML built into it, and then also a, you know, just kind of starting off with a more simple, hey, this is just how you can detect and do complex event processing, not necessarily requiring ML as well, if you wanted to keep it more simple. Um, so without further ado, let's switch into VS Code and get into it. So if you don't know how to set up and run Flink on your own machine, go check out my video on that. It'll be really helpful. Um, I'm just going to focus on the actual code you'll need to run these processes. Um, and so first, let's build our model, our complex event processing pipeline that doesn't require machine learning. So just basic, hey, I want to collect a sequence of events and detect any patterns or relationships between those data points and then alert if those conditions are met. Um, so let's do CEP no ML here. So new file, CEP no ml.py. And then what we'll do is start building our Flink pipeline. And before we do that, we're going to need to install a whole different sequence of different packages. So first we have Flink data, supply Flink data stream. So this is a stream execution environment, time characteristics. So this is just creating environment for us to use Flink within. And then also importing the time characteristics so we can keep track of the time of different events uh, and then relate them to each other with time as a variable. We also have the stream table environment allowing us to create tables within our stream, um, tables of different data points, data types for more advanced data types within Flink. Then we also have our table descriptors. So being able to describe a schema, uh, whether it's Kafka or not, so we're saving some of our data in Kafka actually after it's been processed. Um, and also JSON as a type of data so we can store data in the JSON format. Then we have our connectors to a Flink Kafka consumer and a Flink Kafka producer. So while Kafka is actually producing and consuming the events, we're using Flink to actually do the processing of the events. So it's kind of a merge of both of these two tools. Um, and then we also have uh, pattern CEP. So this is the complex event processing tooling that allows you to import patterns and CEP uh, tooling from Flink. So you don't have to build it all yourself. So it'll automatically check for patterns and things like that over a sequence of different events. Then we also have our pattern process function. So again, another function we can use to analyze our different events for any kind of patterns that might have arisen. And then we also have a value state descriptor. So we can attach tags that describe a value and a state of a different data point of a data stream. Time delta for easier time delta. So detecting the change in time over a, you know, between different data points. Process function for running a process on a data that stream that has appeared. So this is the process that's going to kind of embody all the different transformations and processing we're going to do, and then apply that to each data point that arises. Then we also have our simple string schema. So this is just a schema that allows us to serialize into simple or sim simple strings. And then finally, JSON format for producing and consuming data in JSON format, uh, which is obviously used via APIs, and it's how we're going to be producing and consuming data from Kafka into Flink. So now that we have all of our different packages imported, what we can do then next is actually just set up an environment. So here we're going to need to set up a stream execution environment uh, for Flink to run in. So this is just allowing us to run Flink. Then we're also going to set the stream time characteristic to event time. So this is the event time as in, hey, this is the timing we're going to use to track when events are created setting parallelism so we can process up to four data points in parallel. Um, and then with these uh, characteristics, we're going to then create an environment um, with a stream table as well. So we can stream data in and out of a table within Flink. Then 
the next thing we're going to do is kind of simulate a Kafka source. So here we're going to consume data from a Kafka endpoint here. So imagining in this case, we're running Kafka on our local machine at localhost 9092. So here what we're doing is adding a source. So this is where you would add wherever your data is coming from that you want to be processing from. Uh, in this case, it's Kafka. So we're collecting our data from this Kafka source using the server deserializing, assuming this is coming in JSON format, um, and then assigning a timestamp every time that a new data point has arrived from Kafka. So this is how we're then going to track and group different data points we can address. Hey, have these been created via the same timestamp um, or within the same time period, and then use that uh, to identify patterns in, in higher level environments. Then our next thing is going to be defining a pattern. So here we're going to actually use that Flink CEP to define a pattern that we want to check our data points for. Um, and so for this, what we want to check is that, hey, if there's a really large transaction um, where the amount is over $10,000, then it's followed by a second transaction where it's actually pulling or making another transaction from a different country. So you can see new country doesn't meet the event's previous country. Within five minutes, that's probably going to indicate fraud. You're likely not taking $10,000 out of Mexico and then walking over the border and taking $10,000 out there as well, uh, especially not if you're not conducting some kind of crime. Um, so that's a pretty good guess for, you know, this is probably a fraudulent transaction. So now that we defined our pattern that we want to check for, what we then need to do is apply the pattern to the stream. So here we're going to find another function, which is going to apply pattern. And here we're going to apply that CP pattern to the transaction frames, stream. So anytime a new transaction appears from this Kafka producer, we're going to take that and then feed it into that process matching pattern. So saying, hey, check if this uh, you know, is two transactions, two different countries where the first transaction is over $10,000, and then return the result of that. So if it's false or true. Then what we're also going to do is set a function for deduplicating alerts. Um, so you know, if you have a data point that triggers this function, you might have many then subsequent data points that also trigger this function. Here we're just going to deduplicate any fraudulent alerts to prevent redundant notifications. So if a you know fraudulent actor tries to ten thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars, it's not just going to send unlimited alerts. So it's just a good limiting factor. Maybe you don't want to limit it. Maybe you do want to have those redundant alerts, but if you uh, you know don't want to have that here, we're, this is just a simple check for saying, hey, has this seen customer always already been alerted on? If so, then don't update it. Um, so very simple uh, kind of deduplication function there. And then what we're going to do is our final one is actually syncing the results and writing this to a database. So after we've done the complex event processing, we then need to save the results somewhere. So here, when we uh, trigger this alert and we say, hey, this is potentially fraudulent activity. We then need to log that to our Flink Kafka producer, which is then going to, in this case, uh, insert, run this SQL query to insert into our fraud table, uh, the customer ID and the alert type, which in this case is just that, hey, this is a fraudulent uh, potential uh, transaction that occurred because of that $10,000 two country pattern, right? So now we've got all our different functions in place, and now it's time to bring them all together and then start running the pipeline. Um, so here at the end of the DAG, or the, sorry, not the DAG, the Flink pipeline, we then have our transactions identified as transaction source. So we've created this is where, you know, that Kafka producer where transactions are coming from. Then we're applying that pattern to any transactions that arise from this transaction source, deduplicating any alerts. If a transaction triggers an alert twice, we're only going to send one alert. And then we're finally going to sync those results back into Kafka. Um, and then what we'll do here is just execute this pipeline. And now any new data points that arise from this Kafka source will then be alerted on um, via this link pipeline. So super simple setup here. Now, let's say you want to take it a step further and incorporate some ML in this, right? So that's likely what you're going to do these days. Um, and so for that, what we'll do is actually a quick change. So here, I'm gonna open up a new file and so CEP with ml.py and then here, a lot of the th same things are changed. So I'm not going to go through the entire creation of a DAG again. But really here, what we're just doing is importing NumPy and JobLib, our own uh, ML pipeline, or our own ML tools. Um, and then we're also loading a pre-trained uh, machine learning model, so fraud model from JobLib. So this is a model that we're then going to use to apply onto our different uh, transactions. And here, what we're doing is just after you know the alerts, uh, or you know it, you can run this in place of that initial uh, piece I had, the fraud detection, or you can run it uh, at, 
after it as well. So you, you know, if you just want to have, hey, here's first line fraud detection, and then also we have a machine learning model for more advanced fraud. Here you can have another function where you say, hey, apply this pre-chain machine learning model to the array of the different pieces of information that I'm getting from each of these Kafka producer uh, data points, right? So here you can say, hey, feed this data into a model. Every time a new data point is produced, having this, or you have ML model process function, every time a new transaction stream you know, data point arises, it's then going to be processed using this function where it's going to detect, hey, based on this model, um, and you know, this is where it gets above my pay grade into you know, really complex machine learning models that are used to detect fraud. But here you would bring that in and say, every time that someone produces a native, new data point, feed that into this model and then run that to generate a prediction uh, on fraud probability. And then if it's over 80% fraud probability, set an alert on that. Um, so I just want to show you kind of two different alternate ways of doing CEP, but both using Flink. Um, and so I really hope this video has been helpful. I hope you learned something. And above all else, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Did a guy out.